In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this flying teapot animation in 7 minutes. This is a simple 100 frame long animation, and I'm using Eevee with Bloom turned on. I'll show you how this animation was created from scratch. Let's create a curve circle. If you don't see that, please activate an extra objects add-on. I'll type S and Y to scale on the Y axis. This tutorial will focus on using an empty object as an animation anchor. I'll make the empty object to follow the curve path, and we can use the empty object as the parent to make meshes or objects to follow it. There's a great advantage on using this method, and that is how we can have more options when animating a target mesh. Let's add a teapot mesh. If you don't see that, please activate the extra objects add-on. If we're using the empty object as the parent object for the teapot mesh, then we can rotate the mesh or rotate the empty to animate it. That means we can customize the mesh's rotation by separately animating an empty object. This animation method can come in handy when we're animating sophisticated meshes. We can create a parent and child object setting multiple times, in order to control the animation flow from multiple sources. If we were making the teapot to follow the path without the empty object, we would be limited to use one set of rotation values for all three axes. If we're using the empty object, we can rotate or move the empty object and all meshes that are attached to it will follow along easily. The empty objects can be used to attach a set of particle meshes as well. The empty object is always invisible on the final render scene, and there's no limit on how many of them we can add to the scene either. Also, it's easier to use it as a parent object, because the modified meshes often have their transform values modified as well. The empty object will be created with a default transform values and its origin centered to the 3D cursor each time it's added to the scene. That can be a great advantage and a time saver, when the empty object is used to attach and animate the modified meshes. Finally, if you want to create a camera that is following an object, please make sure its transform values are set to zero first. We can add a track to constraint to make it follow any objects in the scene. What if we have two cameras on the scene? Do you remember the example scene shown in the beginning had another camera? Blender will always show the first camera as the render camera, so we must manually assign an active camera. I'll rotate the mesh and set keyframes to animate it. Suppose I have added a complex rotation animation, but I need to remove them for some reason. If we were animating the mesh, then I would have to go to each frame to remove the keyframe settings. But if I was using an empty object for the rotation animation, then I can just remove the empty object. 
For uncertain final results, I would recommend using three empty objects for rotation, scale, and movement separately. I'll show you how the background mesh was created. I have used a sphere, and Checker selected its faces in edit mode. This was the original prototype animation. I have rotated the curve circle to make the animation look more interesting. For the particles, I have used another mesh as its particle object, and used an emission shader for both teapot and the particles. The environment light can be anything, but please lower the strength to have a dark background. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching.